Vaughn Miller recently on social media suggested that Bills GM Brandon Bean wants to trade up to draft a receiver. Miller posted a viral meme on Instagram with the caption, Brandon Bean arriving to the 2024 NFL draft to trade up for a receiver in Bean we trust. Now, this has some extra legitimacy because Brandon Bean talks to Vaughn Miller about this stuff. Remember, Vaughn Miller just kind of showed up at the Combine a year or two ago. He wants to learn that end of the business, and they've kind of taken him in, and they talked to him about it. So maybe he has been clued into some stuff, and maybe he inadvertently or intentionally let the cat out of the bag. But, you know, we said that after the Bills traded Stephon Diggs. You can't just sit there at 28. You've got a blinking red light. We want a receiver. We want a receiver. The only way you're going to get that guy is when the guy you like is still on the board, a team you'll do a deal with that will do a deal with you is on the clock. You jump up while the pick's on the clock, and you get that pick, and you take that guy. You don't have to worry about somebody jumping you to get him. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I know that's definitely one of the things I'm most excited about to see next next Thursday when the round one comes is what Buffalo is going to do when we start to get to the teens part of the draft, 16, 17, 18. I'll definitely be, ooh, is Buffalo going to make a move? Or are they going to stand pat and then – you know, try to get somebody in the second round that they feel like can help their football team. You heard me say, though, I think that there is a clear line of demarcation between the top four receivers and then the next group, right? I like Roman Wilson. I like Xavier Worthy. I like Leggett from uh, uh, South Carolina. There's, there's other guys to like. But again, I think this top four stand alone when we're talking about the two LSQ kids, Odunze and Marvin Harrison Jr., right? And that's to me, like, where's the Bills' mindset? Do they think they got to get one of those guys, the difference maker, right? Or are they going to be like, hey, one of these other really good ones might not be a superstar like a Roman Wilson. Do we want to trade up in the second round and make sure we get him somewhere? Now, that's going to be the the juggling act they got to figure out or what they're going to do. But by all due accounts, Mike, here would be the first thing I would say is that, you know, neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr. and, and Adunze are going to be gone within the top 12 to 14 picks, it seems like, which then leaves only Brian Thomas Jr., right, that could be the guy you can make a move for. And, you know, that that's, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to, at least. Yeah, and – Look, they, they, Bills fans will remember the year that they made the bold move up for Sammy Watkins when they could have just stayed put for OBJ or Aaron Donald. So you're going to have some nervous Buffalo fans when you introduce the concept of trading up for a receiver, but that's going to be the only way to get the guy they want. And they've got that extra second rounder next year that was the net gain not the net gain because they had to give up a couple of mid round late round picks to get digs but they do have houston's which was originally minnesota's second round pick for 2025 that they could dangle to try to move up what do you think they're gonna do what do you think's a bill's type of move if you put yourself and brandon bean sean mcdermott that organization do you think it's a hey we're gonna be aggressive and go get a guy like brian thomas jr Right, who's super talented, little raw. You know, I've heard there's you know an off the field thing or two, right? That you know is is probably stop him from being a top twelve or fifteen pick, right? But do you think they're gonna be that team that sits back and kind of just lets it fall and maybe make a play in the second round, or do you think they're gonna be aggressive in round one and try to really you know shake things up? I think they're gonna want to move up. They're not gonna want to pay too much to move up and that could be the thing that keeps them from moving up very far because look the vikings are dealing with this this perception that they're desperate to move up to get a quarterback that makes the price go up that justifiably allows the other team to put both thumbs and the rest of their hands on the scale and drive up the price i look at the the seahawks at 16 because we know that john schneider loves to trade down yep if if they're thinking maybe a quarterback and the guy that they would want isn't there. I don't know. But if the guy they really covet isn't there at 16, then I would say that's a that's a potential hot spot for the Bills to trade up because we know from experience that the Seahawks are not averse to trading down. So 
I'd say the window for a trade opens as a practical matter around 16. Um, and, you know, we'll see who's there. And we'll see if, if, if that's uh, ultimately what happens for the Bills. But they're going to do something. And, hey, OBJ is still out there. Tyler Boyd is still out there. There are other options. They could trade for somebody who maybe becomes less relevant to a team based upon who they draft. There are other avenues for the Buffalo Bills to pursue. And as Brandon Bean said when they traded Stephon Diggs 12 days ago, we don't have to have our final team there, until September 1. There's I'm a part of me that, that's the point. There's yeah, a lot to still yeah, be done. Right, right, right. I, I mean, I, I think to your point there, they're not going to be so desperate that they're going to mortgage the farm or the future just to get the guy or a receiver, right? There is a part of me that thinks maybe, maybe they're going to take the 2020 two version of the Kansas City Chiefs and just go, you know what? We're going to do it with a group, right? A group of guys, and we're going to do it as an offense, and we're not going to worry about, oh, one guy, and we got to do this and do that and do that. We're going to run the offense and spread the ball out evenly to where the defense tells Josh Allen to throw the football, and we're not going to have an agenda of we got to get this rookie star receiver or Stephon Diggs the ball. There, the, I, 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 there's a part of me that thinks maybe that's what they might do up there. Maybe they've had enough of the number one diva receiver type of thing. Maybe they're just going to go, hey, we got two good tight ends. We got a pretty good group of receivers. Let's add one more guy, like to your point, whether that's a veteran or maybe a second or third round pick, something like that. Throw him in the conversation where we're going to be fine. Uh, maybe they're going to go that route. I don't. I wouldn't be shocked if they did that. I would not. Well, think about it. What were they losing by way of production? So they don't have as much to replace as if they'd moved on from Diggs in a past year because he didn't have a 100-yard game after week six. He had 21 yards, I think, on three catches in the yeah. loss to the Chiefs in the playoffs. So the production that needs to be replaced isn't as daunting as it would have been. I think that needs to be a factor as well. So I don't think they're going to overpay to trade up, but I'll I'll watch – as of pick 16 to see if something gets done with the Seahawks. All right, we'll take a break. When we return, Jared Goff looks back on the trade from three years ago that made him a lion and changed his life in ways he had never imagined. More PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk. 